And thanks for joining us for the Sunday News at 10. I'm Carolyn Holly filling in. Tap water across the country may be harming people's health. A new national study says 45% of U.S. tap water has at least one type of synthetic chemical in it. Our Sophia Bliss looked into two different studies that found these chemicals in the Northwest. Almost half the country's tap water, 45%, has potentially dangerous chemicals in it. That's according to a study by the U.S. Geological Survey. And a separate study found those chemicals in some of Boise's water. PFAS, per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances, are a family of man-made chemicals. They're also known as forever chemicals because they stay in the environment for thousands of years. And studies show they can cause health problems in people and animals. While PFAS are usually found in nonstick items and things that are stain, water, and fire resistant, scientists say they're uh, everywhere. They're basically in everything we use, wear, and eat. The CDC says they're in things like shampoo, dental floss, makeup, microwave popcorn bags, pizza boxes, just to name a few. Uh, everywhere we look, there's PFAS in rivers, drinking water, surface waters, groundwater. The USGS says more than 12,000 types of these chemicals exist, but current testing can only find about 30 of them. Because there are so many, and they're in a variety of products, understanding PFAS's potential health risks to people is difficult. But the EPA says studies show links between exposure to PFAS and health problems like reproductive issues, developmental delays in kids, cancer, weaker immune systems, and interference with hormones. PFAS is an endocrine disruptor at low levels. And, and that's very important for our system, especially if you're a, a woman who's pregnant or you're breastfeeding uh, or you have young children. We're not, we don't want to impact their uh, future, their endocrine system with these compounds. But in the young kids, we're not going to see the effects for probably 20, 30 years. Two recent studies looked at levels of PFAS in the water around the Boise area. The USGS conducted one, and researchers from the College of Southern Nevada, a community college in Clark County, Nevada, did the other. The U.S. Geological Survey took samples from people's taps, with water coming from a Boise water utility, Veolia. They found no PFAS in the one sample they took. But downstream from the Boise wastewater treatment plant, researchers did find PFAS in samples. What we found in Boise, uh, of the seven compounds of PFAS, we came across five that are definitely present, while three were relatively high. Dr. Douglas Sims is a dean and environmental science professor at the College of Southern Nevada. He's also a geochemist who's been doing this kind of research for 10 years. The USGS and Dr. Sims' team used two different testing methods. Dr. Sims used one approved by the EPA. So PFAS have been around since the 1940s. Why are they important to keep track of? And that's the real concern is that why do we do this is we want to know what's going to happen, not today because there's not much we can do, what's going to happen downstream and what's going to happen to the food web. Because these levels, while relatively low, are very high for organisms within the water. These types of chemicals are measured in parts per billion or parts per trillion. So even at very low levels, PFAS have the potential to affect human health. The College of Southern Nevada researchers took samples as part of a larger study looking at the western U.S. We looked at every river that we could, uh, mainly through populated cities. Overall, they found PFAS concentrations proportional to population, meaning the more people, the higher the concentrations. The Boise River is a great example of a, a river that originates in a non-populated area, goes through a populated area, and then exits back into a non-popular raw area. Even in areas where there aren't many people, they found human impact. A lot of those compounds are become uh, what we call aerolized. It's in the in the rains because it's on the winds, gets in the clouds, drops into a, a, a raw area, the wilderness, and ends up in the river at low levels. Our impact to that river as humans, the anthropogenic effect, is clearly seen within the actual water chemistry when you look at what's present in the water. Officials have found PFAS in southern Idaho before. The Idaho Department of Environmental Quality found them on Mountain Home Air Force Base and at Gowan Field prompting the military to take action and start sampling water this year. The Idaho DEQ says the chemicals were found in a mountain home preschool's well, along with local public water systems that serve about 260,000 people in Ada County. PFAS aren't the only substances Sims and his team tested for. In their water samples from Boise, Dr. Sims and his team also found pharmaceutical and recreational drugs. Currently, there are no regulations federally around levels of PFAS in the water or in the air. But there are some proposals in the works. The EPA is working to set limits in public drinking water systems. 
Once that's finalized, the government could require mitigation if concentrations get too high. Some states, including Washington and Oregon, are working to limit PFOS through legislation. Idaho doesn't have anything in the works that would do the same. But Dr. Sim says we can all try to limit our exposure to protect our health and the health of future generations. PFOS is there. It's, it's here for a long time, and our goal is to get ahead of it and definitely make the public aware. And Sim says we shouldn't store large amounts of bottled foods or drinks in our garages because the heat in our garage can cause chemicals from the bottles to get into whatever is inside the container. He also suggests only buying what you need for one week at a time. That way, the bottles don't sit for too long and allow the chemicals to leach out over time.